Hi, I'm Rick Rollins, and this is Going Places. Hi, I'm Rick Rollins, and welcome to this edition of Going Places as we continue our conversation about love, legacy, and history. Here's what's coming up on the show that we have planned just for you. Take a look. The love coach, Robin Mitchell, is back to inspire the love we desire. It's off to the movies with Alicia Stafford as we go to see Cyrano. Our pandemic love story with Alicia and Norman Harris continues with a special update you're not going to want to miss. But first up, Kiva Williams and Karima Henry have come up with an idea that brings small and growing businesses to the forefront. Well, it's no secret that this is Black History Month, and we have two young ladies with us uh, that are joining us this morning that are telling us about a very interesting challenge for not only one community, but the entire community to support small, to buy Black, to make sure that local is their priority at all times. Won't you help me welcome Kiva and Karima from Hi. Team Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being on. So let's talk about this. Now, you came up with this idea for a bingo card that would allow people to go from business to business to business. And yes. so let's, let's, how did you come up with the idea? Now, is this, an, is this an original idea or did somebody inspire you? <laughs> it's an it's a inspiration. Um, Karima, she's a crafter, so she loves, um, doing fun things. And she mentioned that another city had a, a similar game for Juneteenth, Black History. And she told me about it. And I said, hey, we have to bring this to Tampa. Like, we have to get this going for our community because, you know, we want to support Black-owned businesses. And we want to drive traffic to their mm -hmm. to their businesses. And so how, how successful has this been so far, Karima? It's doing really well. Um, the community loves it. The businesses really appreciate um, this way of driving traffic um, to their location and even online businesses as well. So this is just a fun way to get the community involved. And so, so we are almost at the end of, of the month. We've got two <laughs> days left, but then if anybody that knows me knows that it's 365, 24 exactly. seven. So we, not, we got the shortest month. <laughs> month of the year um, <laughs> but we make it we're making it count but this yeah. i think is just the 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 kick to making sure that people are aware of this so i think that like you said there are other opportunities we've got kwanzaa we've got juneteenth we've got but why do we need to wait to a holiday to support any local business you're in a local business right now Yes. yes, we're um, coming to you live from Coffee Speaks and Tea Talks. It's a local Black-owned coffee shop. Oh, they know it because um, there's a commercial every week. But, Hello, I'm Arlene, <laughs> and welcome to Coffee Speaks and Tea Talks. Yes. They know it all too well. <laughs> That's the whole thing. You find the places where you know that you are welcome. You find the places that yes. they're striving to, to do what they do. So it, yes. it's a wonderful thing. So, yes. so tell me, when you came up with the idea, how hard was this to get anybody involved? I would imagine that it was a no-brainer. <laughs> it wasn't hard. We um, we sent out a mass email. We messaged 30 businesses that we, you know, uh, support throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And we said, hey, we're starting a challenge. Get on board. You have to this date to, you know, agree. And um, some businesses, you know, we, we, did, we gave them a short window. So we're going to give them past the time. Some businesses didn't uh, message us in time, but we were happy to support that. Um, some came on and we were shouting them out. We were able to get them um, local news features. We're on this show um, this morning to showcase, you know, their businesses. So we're excited. This is just the beginning. Yes. So, it, okay, Karima, what's the, I know that there are people already saying, well, when are you going to do this again? So <laughs> when can you expect this portion of the push to resurge again or to resurface Juneteenth. again? June team. Okay. Yeah, but we're not just doing, you know, just the J. We're going to do the whole month as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to keep carrying it on. Like, we don't want it to stop. We want to get the momentum going so people will continue to patronize those businesses. Yes. And, and so I, th I think that as a small business who's growing, no, we're going to yes. change this. We're, I don't like as growing businesses, because when you yes, think small, you stay small. As growing businesses in this community, 
I think that one of the things that has to happen is that people have to have the same idea that you have. Not, don't try to copy it because I believe me, I'm sure there's either a copyright or a patent being put down <laughs> real soon on these two. Okay, yeah, so what I'm saying is that you have to take the same initiative and support uh -huh. and find ways to support the business. I mean, there's Candy Lowe and her Black Business Bus, bus Tour, but, there, but it can't just be two organizations saying, or two uh, ideas or concepts saying, it's got to be a whole community. And, yeah. it just, and, and it's not just, yes, we want you to support black and brown businesses, but you need to support all growing businesses because yes. they are the, the heartbeat of any city. Exactly. Okay. I'll come off my soapbox. Okay. I'm supposed to be hosting. I'm not a guest. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but I, I really think that what you're doing is to be not only applauded, but uh, the small business associations around should really get in touch with you and say, hey, how can we help make this, you know, a year long? This needs yeah. to be long. Oh, yeah. It really does from the standpoint. And I understand why we're picking specific times because some people, that's what has to happen to them. They have to, they, their, their, their vision, their box is only so big. <laughs> I, just crawled back on the, yeah. just, I didn't mean to crawl back on again but anyway but the big thing is that I just I applaud you I'm so proud of you and y'all know Kiva you know she's the <laughs> foodie mama That's and, right. and, and, and you will get to know me yes, yes we oh uh, <laughs> I'm sure Kiva already gave you an earful that I, I need to get in touch with you because you do some really great things tell us the yeah. name of what let's talk about what you do for a second because they're they're cueing me saying we run out of time so oh. it's my show my we run out of time okay so go ahead my vlog is craftingafunlife.com you can find me on socials crafting a fun life i'm all about you know fun activities with the kids and creating fun crafts whether it's with recycled materials or something affordable for everyone well, we look forward to having you on the show. Give, give, we, we're going to create some segments for you because Kiva's getting ready to do some new things as well. Not only will she come on uh, from one expert, she's going to show us all of her wheelhouse. The umbrella is getting ready to open up. So when we come back, the love coach, Robin Mitchell, is in the house as we continue our conversation on how to inspire the love you desire. Right after this, stay with us. I'm Arlene. Welcome to Coffee Speaks and Tea Talks. What's your coffee saying? Whether in for business or just getting away, let Coffee Speaks and Tea Talks be a part of your day. Life is moving, visible with color, sound, and community. Enjoy a cup of coffee at Coffee Speaks and Tea Talks. Coffee Speaks and Tea Talks. Enjoy life one cup at a time. So welcome back to this edition of Going Places. We're talking about love, legacy, and history all month long. And back with us again today is Robin Mitchell, the love guru, the love coach, the love doctor. Whatever you call him, understand this. Love is the prescription that he prescribes on a daily basis. Take it away, Robin. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. What I want to challenge us to think about today is how to realize what it's like. Love will show up in different ways, but it should always be in action. And it is always willing to sacrifice itself for the greater good. Love challenges us to dig deeper, to find our weaknesses and fix them and build on them, make them stronger. Love challenges us to look inward and make sure our inward is an example of what's on that. Sometimes we spend so much time on the outside, making sure the outside, but the inside is tore up. We, we, we're envious, we're jealous, we, we, we have um, um, negative thinking, and we mm -hmm. st get stuck in that stinking thinking, mm -hmm. and our attitude stinks. 
and it mm. literally makes us hard to love. Have you ever been around somebody that complains all the time? Nobody likes to be around anybody that, that complains all the time and, and always has to have their way. They, they say, well, it's my way or the highway. Well, if you don't like it, get gone. And when you have folks like that in your life, you may find yourself throwing up the deuces because That's you know it. what? I don't want to play with you no more because you for play, you're not for real. Wow. But when you find a real one and they're willing to invest love in you, and you realize that you could do more in the relationship. Because see, that's, that's what real love does. It wants you make to love more and love better. Mm-hmm. See, too often we go out through the day fighting lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my. Oh my. Slaying the dragons. Yes. And we do all this superhero stuff outside the house. But mm-hmm. when we come home or when we come to our, our love, the one we call our, the love of our life, we, we, we give the world the best of ourselves. Mm. But when we get home, we give our love what's left of ourselves. Wow. We give them the leftovers. Wow, and who man. Wants leftovers every day. Come on, sir. So instead of giving them the, our best, we give them our less. Mm. So one of the things you need to do is every day, make sure you give the, your love the best of yourself. That was actually the first poem I ever wrote my wife. It was the first uh, Valentine's Day after we were married. And the poem is entitled, uh, Have I Given Her the Best of My All? Now I've been banned from, from reading and reciting that poem and I'll tell you why. Because I, I literally get choked up every time I read it. One of the ladies uh, from church read, read my book and she read the poem. She came up to me one time. She said, boy, you wrote that poem from your soul. <laughs> I said, you did. Right. It is a beautiful poem. <laughs> it really Thank is. You. Thank you. So but you got to get the is, book if you want to read the poem because he's not going to recite it because we're going to have Robin crying. <laughs> I know that's right. Listen. The, the point is, and the challenge is, is to learn to love from your soul. So you want to give your love the best of your all. So that way, when you get home at the end of the day, you save all the best of you for them, and they will love you for it. They will, they will praise you for it. And as a matter of fact, they will brag on you for it. So you wow. never have to brag on being a 10, because you will mm. Now, let me give you another love tip. Now, the, this love tip is, well, it's, it's my mother's favorite love tip. <laughs> my mother's favorite love tip is that is, is uh, well, I'll just put it like this. <sighs> love's touch. Mm. Love's touch. Mm-hmm. And, and this and my, my father tells me all the time, I, I'm getting my love touch in. So he, he makes sure he hugs my mother at least three times, four times a day. Most wonderful people. Yep. Yeah. My parents have been married 53 years. Wow. As a matter of fact, my grandparents uh, were till death did, did them part. Mm. Married 73 years. As my a matter of fact, my grandmother. Mother, yeah. Fantastic. I love it. I celebrate it, Rick. I celebrate yep. it. <laughs> My aunt asked my, my grandmother on the, uh, their 70th wedding anniversary, she asked my grandmother, how did y'all do it? How did y'all stay together for 70 years? My granny said, you just don't leave. <laughs> wow, there you go. Leaving is my not an option. That's right. And me and my wife have made a commitment. I ain't leaving and I ain't being left. If you, I love it. If, if you packing your bags, I'm packing mine too. Where are we fixing to go? <laughs> okay. But, but my grandfather said this, he said, it's hard work, but it's worth it. So in your relationship, if you're loving each other and you're married, you're committed, don't leave, work through it. I right. guarantee you, if you do it right, it is worth the work and it's worth the wait. Some of us are not willing to wait for the love that we want. We're not willing to wait for the 10 we're looking for. So we'll take mm-hmm. five twos to make the mm. 10 in the meantime. Wow. And when the 10 shows up, they don't want you because you're too busy entertaining too many twos. twos. That's it. That's it. I think that's the place that we stop. Don't entertain twos. Be a 10 so you can attract a 10 
and you can inspire 20 or more years of love. Robin, I thank you for being with us. I, once again, let's tell them how they can get in touch with you, where they can get the book, and I want final comments from you. Sure. So you can uh, get my book at my website, inspirethelove.com. You can pay with PayPal or debit card or, or credit card. And my contact information is on there as well. You can see my bio and some of the things we've done. So I really want to encourage you to, if you get the book, don't, don't read it through. And now you can read it through in one city, but go through the daily assignments. Yes. Give yourself a love score at the end of the day. I guarantee you, if you follow the love's process that I've shown you in the book, if you follow the love's process, you will have the love you desire and life will be better for it. Every couple, and I, 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 I kid you not, every couple that has read the entire book and applied it every day, came back and bought books for others without yes. fail. I had one couple buy 20 books just to give away as gifts because that's right. how they, how much they were inspired. And believe it or not, this couple were in their 60s. Mm. So whether you just right. get started on, on your love journey, are you been with someone for so long, y'all like furniture, just there. The book will bless your life and you don't even know it. Mm. My friend, you have blessed me. I'm so glad we got a chance to do this. And you know how much I believe in you. You know how much I believe in the book. And we're gonna have you back on. Uh, in the soon coming day. Don't be surprised if I call you. We're going to figure out how to get you back every now and then. We're going to do a love check-in. How about that? And a love check-up. Okay, thanks for being with us, Robin. You take care. Give my give my love and my hug to your love and, and know that we look forward to the conversation with the two of you in the soon coming day. Absolutely. Thank you, Ray. Take care now. More Going Places when we come back right after this. Alicia Stanford, let's go to the movies. It's a classic tale as old as time and is making its way to the big screen. It's full of romance, action, music, and unrequited love. It's Cyrano. Love, does that mean nothing to you? Children need love, adults need money. The course of true love never did run smooth, especially in great literature. Cyrano de Bergerac is enjoying another big screen adaptation, this time as a musical. Peter Dinklage of Game of Thrones fame takes on the title character in this sweeping cinematic adaptation of the classic novel. His Cyrano is a guy with wit, swagger, and a heart that belongs only to Haley Bennett's Roxanne. My sole purpose on this earth is to love Roxanne. Does she know? The world will never accept someone like me and a tall, beautiful woman. Roxanne's family is poor and her mother wants her to marry a wealthy nobleman, but the spirited young lady has other ideas. She's head over heels in love with a new recruit in Cyrano's battalion, Christian, played by Kelvin Harrison Jr. The two men come up with a way to make Roxanne fall in love, with Christian providing the voice and Cyrano providing the words. I could no more stop loving you. I could no more stop loving you. Then I could stop the sun rising. Then I can stop the sun rising. Really? My cruel love has never stopped growing. Cyrano is helmed by the critically acclaimed director Joe Wright, based on the stage musical by Erica Schmidt, who decided to adapt the character of Cyrano for her husband, Peter Dinklage. What does it feel like? Slow dance in sunlight with someone you love. And instead of relying on lengthy monologues, Schmidt decided to use music to convey the character's inner feelings, which was a big selling point for director Wright. The result is a lush romantic drama with bits of comedy and action. Dinklage's face conveys all the emotion, and his performance, like the story, will break your heart. 
The film was shot in the city of Noto on the island of Sicily. And now I have a new item on my bucket list. You can catch up with Cyrano only in theaters, but it should be available for DVD and streaming in a couple of months. Until then, stay safe and healthy. I'm Alicia Stanford, and that's what's going on at the movies. It's like Ricardo's West Shore Plants. So the proposal is magical mm -hmm. and we go to, since I'm going to go here one more time, since I wasn't invited to the wedding, I can't talk about how magical it was. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm a little bitter. No, I'm only kidding. Hey, you invite who you can invite and we were still in COVID. I, I, get it. I apologize. It was a COVID wedding and my wife we took, took one of my tables, so I had to cut my list. <laughs> it was a COVID <laughs> wedding. Yeah, I got something. <laughs> but, but okay, so. The wedding takes place. Oh, it's a magical day from what I saw. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, y'all, y'all, we will have some video to roll over this. It was a magical moment. Yeah. Now, so from the day, let me go back. Let me do some fact. So from the day y'all met, two and a half months or month and a half, he asked you to marry and marry him. You say yes. Mm -hmm. The wedding took place when? In February. February 14th, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Some people say, coming say up. I love a good Valentine's Day wedding. I, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> for the Valentine's. That's also my other birthday. It's my gotcha day. That's the day my parents adopted me. So that's why oh. this month is so important to me. Awesome. So, oh, wow. so you have this wedding. It's romantic. Uh, and all of a sudden you get you start getting all this attention because when I opened the paper and it said Norman and the headline, Norman Harris is married. And, and that's another thing. I think Tampa Bay Times actually ran a story that day of the wedding. Yeah. And it was not strategically planned. It just happened to be that way. It's serendipity. That's it. We started getting the attention before the actual wedding date. It was from the proposal, from the beautiful photos that we po posted. Yeah, they were um, Somebody off of a um, celebrity blog wanted to write about us because our friend, wow. she, she works um, in the industry <coughs> mm -hmm. and they were looking for some, they were looking for a story of a COVID love story. And she, she was like, do you mind if I submit you? Because you guys have like the perfect COVID love story. And I said, sure. From that blog picking it up, like um, the news channel, channel nine picked it up, Tampa Tribune picked it up, a lot of different um, news avenues picked it up. And, a lot of signals. Yeah, and because it was right around um, when COVID first started, um, now obviously there's so many COVID love stories every day, but um, that was like in the beginning of COVID when it happened and everything was just really sad and there was yes. a lot of deaths and a lot of um, sadness going on and they just really wanted something happy to talk about. And so they were mm -hmm. like, we want to share your story and have show how COVID can bring about good, not, not only bad. So. Honey, y'all were, I mean, it, we needed a love story. <laughs> we needed something and you provided it. So by the, oh, wait a minute, February 14th, this is, Tomorrow, that wait, let's see, this will air. So, happy anniversary! Thank you, <laughs> Thank you. appreciate it. Okay, yes, I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute, okay. So, now we're getting ready to celebrate the first anniversary, yes, sir. But we also getting ready to celebrate some milk, yes, right, yes. <laughs> and so, by the time this airs, y'all gonna be a mom and daddy, 
That's yes. right. <laughs> Wow. So talk about an anniversary present, Norman, you sly dog, too. I know, I know. And, and, the, and the most wonderful thing about all of this, it's like all the stars just line up. It's like we didn't strategically plan to have a Valentine's Day wedding. We didn't strategically plan. But first of all, we didn't strategically plan to have a COVID love story. Right. And we didn't strategically plan to have a Valentine's Day wedding. Then we did strategically plan a pregnancy that would uh, give us a child in uh, February, in February <laughs> the month of our marriage and the month of Valentine. Yep. It, it, wow. It all adds up. See, the stars aligned and said, Alicia and Norman. Yes, sir. Here you go. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. That's, that is that's, wonderful. That's well, congratulations to you both. Thank I, you. I, 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 the minute I, and I don't know how I missed this the first time it aired on Steve, uh, but Steve Harvey, thank you very much. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to do this and I, and I thank you for jumping in and saying yes, because I thought given what we're doing this month, that this was the perfect time to do this. I want you to know that we wish you all the happiness in the world. Norman, you are probably one of the greatest guys I know. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. the show today, uh, you and Robin, Mitchell, y'all are two people who I just look up to because you, you, Alicia, you know, I don't have to tell you, Norman's just cool. He just suave and he just does, he does yes. his thing. And Robin is the same way. I so agree. I just really, I, I'm blessed to have you both in my life. And Alicia, I am so happy for him because he deserves a woman like you and you uh -huh. deserve a man like Thank him. You. And I can't wait to see baby journey. We're gonna have to do, y'all have to send me a picture so we can put it up. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Like I said, the baby will be here yeah. and we are excited for you. So Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Rick. You've always been one that have done great things in the community. And okay. um, now you are spreading positivity and love. And yes. we are glad to be a part of this initiative and effort. So well, thank, thank you. you again. Thank you so very much. Yes, thank they're going you. places. They're going, they're gonna go get some rest. <laughs> He's coming. Yeah. Again, thank you for being here. More going places right after this. Again, great job, you guys. Thank you for thank being you. here. We're out of time, but I want to remind you that you can see Encore presentations every Saturday and Sunday morning right here at 5 a.m. on MOR. For everyone here at Going Places, we thank you for joining us. We look forward to telling her story as we celebrate Women's History Month next month, all month long, right here on Going Places for everybody at Going Places. We thank you for joining us. Take care.